primary oocyte consists of 44 XX chromosomes. It is around 35 microns in diameter. As the follicle undergoes maturation, primary oocyte increases in size and reaches about 140 microns in diameter. The flat follicular cells now becomes cuboidal. Follicular cells multiply to form several layers of cells around the developing primary oocyte. Scattered amorphous material accumulates between the inner layer of follicular cells and the primary oocyte. This glycoprotein-rich material fuses to form a complete striated membrane called as zona pellucida. It is derived from both primary oocyte and follicular cells. Numerous microvilli of the primary oocyte projects into the zona pellucida, where it comes in contact with similar processes of inner layer of follicular cells. It helps in transfer of nutrition to the developing ovum. The multiplication of follicular cells gains space and as a result, small spaces appear in between the follicular cells. These spaces fuse with each other, forming antrum folliculi. It is filled with a fluid called as liquor folliculi. The follicular cells which forms the outer layer is called as membrana granulosa. The follicular cells that intervene between the antrum folliculi and zona pellucida is known as cumulus euphoricus or cumulus ovaricus. Those follicular cells that suspend the zona pellucida and developing ovum constitutes the discus prolegiris. At the same time, changes take place in the stromal cells of ovary surrounding the developing follicle. These stromal cells organizes to form a sheath known as Taker folliculi. Taker folliculi consists of two layers. Taker interna, inner vascular and cellular layer. Taker externa, outer fibrous layer. At this stage, the primary oocyte completes the first meiotic division to form secondary oocyte and first polar body. Hello students, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to continue learning the chapter Human Reproduction of Class 12th Biology. Now in the previous video, we had started off with the process of gametogenesis and we had learned about the process of gametogenesis in the human males, that is the process of spermatogenesis. In this video, we will be learning the process of gametogenesis in human females, that is the process of oogenesis. Now let us continue and understand the process of oogenesis that is going to occur in the female. So the process of development of a mature female gamete that is the ovum or the egg cell is called the oogenesis and this process remember it is going to begin in the embryonic stage unlike in the male the process begins in puberty this process oogenesis is going to begin in the embryonic stage in case of the female. Now the ovary is going to contain around 2 to 4 million of the eggs immature egg at the fetal stage itself right and nothing is going to be added no more eggs are going to be added up after the birth so whatever we have at the fetal stage that continues at the later point of development the egg in the fetus is called the oogonia and that is the gamete mother cell and all the development that we're going to talk about is going to begin with the process of oogonia let us now understand the process of the oogenesis in the females now, the oogonia undergoes meiotic cell division and during the prophase 1 of the meiosis 1, the developmental process is going to be temporarily arrested. That is, there is no more development after this particular prophase 1 stage. 
and at this stage the oogonia is called the primary oocyte so the oogonia arrested at the prophase 1 is called primary oocyte now the primary oocyte gets surrounded by certain granulosa cells and now it is called the primary follicle so at the time of puberty the number of primary follicle is going to be around 60 to 80000 per ovary now this primary follicle is going to undergo further development during the puberty and they get additional layers of granulosa cells surrounding the primary follicle and now they also form a new layer new theca and that is called the secondary follicle now the secondary follicle develops into tertiary follicle as a fluid filled cavity called antrum is developed in the secondary follicle now remember this is also referred to as enteral follicle and the theca that we are talking about at the secondary follicle stage now they get organized into theca interna that is the internal theca and theca externa that is the external theca so to summarize you have the primary oocyte surrounded by granular cells called a primary follicle the primary follicle develops into secondary follicle as and when there is additional layer of granular cells and the secondary follicle develops into tertiary follicle when there is a fluid filled space called the antrum and also known as the antral follicle now the primary oocyte within the tertiary follicle so till now what we have understood that the follicle is developing and inside that follicle we are having the primary oocyte so now the primary oocyte within the tertiary follicle during the puberty it completes the meiosis 1 so as we understood in the previous slide that it is in the prophase 1 of meiosis 1 that the development is arrested so now what happens is the development continues of the primary oocyte and the development continues by completion of the meiosis 1 and now the meiosis 1 is not an equal division it is an unequal division and it is going to occur when there is an elevated level of the luteinizing hormone or the LH also known as the LH surge so in response to this LH surge there is going to be the completion of meiosis 1 of the primary oocyte but remember one thing very important here the division is unequal that is you're going to get a larger cell and a smaller cell so the larger cell is haploid both of these are haploid so the larger haploid cell is called a secondary oocyte whereas the smaller cell the tiny cell which is also haploid in nature is called the polar body first polar body or the polar body one now the tertiary follicle that has developed right till now we talked about the tertiary follicle remember two things are going on simultaneously one is the follicular development and inside that the oocyte development so the primary oocyte completed its meiosis one and gave the secondary oocyte now outside the secondary oocyte is the tertiary follicle now this tertiary follicle at this time matures into graphene follicle and the graphene follicle is going to get another layer a new membrane is formed the jonah pellucida so this new layer new membrane around the graphene follicle is called jonah pellucida now remember at this stage when you are going to have the graphene follicle and you're going to have the jonah pellucida with the secondary oocyte at this stage the ovulation occurs remember the ovulation is going to occur again in response to a change in the hormonal level and that is nothing but the again uh, surge in the luteinizing hormone level and during the ovulation process there is going to be the rupturing of the graphene follicle or the mature follicle and the ovum is released surrounded by a layer called corona radiata we'll see that in a minute now the meiosis 2 is completed when a sperm penetrates its plasma membrane remember till now what has happened the secondary oocyte has completed only the meiosis 1 there is no meiosis 2 as of now so that is going to be completed only when a sperm is going to penetrate its plasma membrane and only after the completion of meiosis 2 is the egg technically called an ovum so we are using the ovum loosely but the word actually should be used only after the completion of the meiosis 2 now let us have a look at the graphene follicle under a microscope this is the fluid filled space and this must be the antrum and here you are going to have the secondary oocyte 
that is completed the meiosis 1. Now let us understand what we spoke with the help of a diagram. So as you can see here, this is a cortex region of the ovary and you can see these are the primary follicles. These are the primary follicles and these primary follicles develops into the secondary follicles, tertiary follicle, right? And then the mature graphene follicle. And during the process, there is also development of the oocyte. So as we discussed, there is going to be the addition of granulosa cells just outside the oocyte, primary oocyte. And over time, when it is in the tertiary follicle stage, there is going to be the formation of this fluid filled space. And this is called the entrum and the southern name entral follicle or the tertiary follicle. And from here, the next stage that is going to be the mature follicle or the graphene follicle. And you can clearly see the well developed structure, the space fluid filled space called the entrum along with the oocyte. And this is going to be the secondary oocyte stage. And also you can see the layer called zona pellucida. And from here during ovulation, what happens is there is going to be a rupture of the mature graphene follicle and release of the ovulated oocyte or the secondary oocyte along with a layer as I said there is the corona radiata. Now we will see what the structures are that is corpus luteum and under what condition does it actually develop that we will talk in the upcoming concept that is menstruation. Now let us summarize the entire process of oogenesis. So the oogenesis is going to begin with the oogonium that is undergoing the mitosis to increase in number. There is going to be the primary oocyte and the meiosis 1 begin. Now this primary oocyte is going to get uh, arrested at the prophase 1 of meiosis 1 and all of these events is going to take place before the birth and after birth the process of development continues only after the puberty and that is going to resume the meiosis 1. So the oocyte meiosis arrest at the metaphase 2 that is it is going to develop that primary oocyte is going to develop into secondary oocyte and the first polar body remember this is a meiosis 1 and this is an unequal division. Now after the sperm penetration there is going to be the completion of the meiosis 2 and you are going to get another unequal division with a larger mature ovum and the second polar body right now the first polar body also divides and produces two more polar bodies and all of these polar bodies are going to get degenerated so you can see a larger cell that is a mature ovum and a smaller cell called the polar bodies at the end of the process of oogenesis now the question is why does the mature ovum larger in size why does the division of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 in oogenesis is not going to produce equal sized cells remember that the oocyte or that is the ovum is going to contain all the cytoplasm reserved food materials and other other components that is going to require for the cell to form the zygote after the fertilization so from the male components it is not the cytoplasm that is going to come nor any other components that is the male nuclei that is going to be received and not any other components so to help in that further development the cell requires the components and some amount of reserved food materials and all of those are going to be stored in the female gamete only and that is why the female gamete is considerably larger than the male gamete and also the second polar body and that is the reason why the divisions of the meiosis 1 and 2 both are unequal division given as to a larger oocyte and ovum compared to the polar bodies i hope you are clear with this concepts now let us compare the spermatogenesis versus oogenesis there are certain similarities but there are also considerable differences in these two processes as you can see that both of these cases the cell that is going to start is going to be deployed that is going to be having 46 chromosome or 
23 pairs of chromosome but at the end when you're going to get the gametes they're going to be all haploid in nature so in uh, case of the male uh, the spermatogenesis the process begins at puberty whereas in case of the female the process starts at the fetal stage and as in case of male there is going to be mitosis uh, to increase in the number similarly here also you're going to have the mitosis differentiation to increase in the number and then you get primary spermatocyte in case of male whereas in case of female you get the primary oocyte now in case of male the process is very simple straightforward primary oocyte undergoes meiosis one equal size cells give rise to the secondary spermatocyte that undergoes the second meiotic division give rise to four equal sized haploid cells right that is the spermatozoa but in case of female the process is slightly different as we discussed after the first meiotic division it is going to get completed just before the ovulation so the process of development starts at the fetal stage get arrested resumes at the puberty gets completed again half of that that is meiosis one gets completed just before the ovulation given as to the secondary oocyte but the secondary oocyte is going to give rise to the ovum that mature ovum and the secondary polar body just after the penetration of the sperm cells so this is a comparison of the spermatogenesis versus the oogenesis remember this is very important many times they are going to ask this in the examinations i hope you are clear with these concepts of spermatogenesis and oogenesis please go through the concepts read the textbook also and if you are having any more doubts go through the video and if you still get any doubts please ask the questions thank you all for joining today in this video